morning all and uh, today I'm going to do a one day project to try and use these little wireless transceiver modules the NRF24L01 plus modules so here are some of the standard modules that have the uh, PCB antenna and also I have this high power module which uh, I opened in my post bag number six video that comes with its own antenna and there's a power amplifier on the board. Um, I also have this which is some sort of interface unit for the NRF modules but I've since done some reading on this and I don't think there's any code in here. Um, someone, is, uh, someone has made code for this thing but I'm not intending to use that today. I've got a couple of these base boards and these are for the NRF modules to plug in and they provide a nice easy access to the data pins and also a 3.3 volt regulator to provide a power source for this thing. Now these things are apparently a bit flaky on the 3.3 volts so there are lots of capacitors on here as well but I don't think I'm going to use these today because um, for people watching this video that don't have these it would be uh, the wrong thing to do I think. Uh, now also here I've got a couple of uh, ribbon cable strips. I normally tear these into runs of 10. Uh, we only need 8 but I'll just uh, keep them as 10. Um, I've got uh, an Uno. This is a clone Uno. But I like this one because it has both the female and the male pins and my wire strips are only female to female. And also here I've got a Nano. Uh, with a nano breakout board again that gives me the male pins so that I can attach my female headers uh, I just need to solder this nano onto uh, its uh, header strips so just going back to my post bag number six uh, video where I opened the high power transceiver um, I had a little conversation with SuperDAO and uh, SuperDAO was saying how he'd powered these things up and got them to work and I said which library did you use and he said this one which is the Maniac Bug RF24 library and uh, he also pointed me to this link which goes to a page uh, let me go to the top of that and that gives lots of information on how to use these NRF24 L01 transceiver modules. So one of the first things you come across in the how to is note power problems uh, people have been having trouble with this thing because of the 3.3 volts. Connect a 0.1 microfarad to 10 microfarad capacitor directly on the module from 3.3 volts to ground. And this provides a little sort of um, power supply, local uh, charge source, so that when the transceiver fires up and starts transmitting and draws a lot of current, um, it has some pool of energy that it can draw on. So I'm going to put those capacitors on right away because I just don't want to have any problems with uh, intermittency. So I'm going to do that right now. So soldering iron warming up. I'm going to use uh, a 3.3 microfarad tantalum capacitor for fairly obvious reasons. I've got quite a lot of them. And uh, I've got my NRF module ready to be soldered onto. Now the capacitor will go directly between ground and 3.3 volt VCC pins 1 and 2 so brown and red here. Pin 1 you can see is identified by that um, bit of silk that silk screen square on the corner there and it goes 1, 2 and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the capacitor I'm going to put on the top side of the board directly on pins 1 and 2. So there's my 3.3 microfarad capacitor soldered between pins 1 and 2. One is ground, 2 is VCC 3.3 volts. Got to get the capacitor the right way around, of course. I've done that on two of the modules. And uh, while I was at it, I just soldered the header on my Nano as well. So I think we're done with the soldering iron. Now we can get on with the wiring. So just flicking through the how-to we got some uh, nice photos there, including the uh, high power transceiver unit. And then you come to this uh, diagram of the pins, uh, the board layout with its pins, and also this chart which uh, shows the RF module pins and the signal names on the left, 
color codes for the wiring. I'm going to stick rigidly to those color codes. So brown is one, red is two to make things nice and easy. And uh, the Arduino pins for the RF24 library. So it looks like from this column we're going to be using 9, 10, 13, 11, 12 and possibly two but I don't think we're going to use the IRQ line. So I've already connected up um, one of the ribbon cables to the first NRF module, uh, brown, red, orange, yellow and so on and that follows this numbering sequence where you can see uh, the pin number and the associated signal and also the way the pins are actually laid out on the board. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've connected the first two wires, which are brown and red. Brown uh, goes to ground. Now, crucially important, uh, let me get a pencil. Uh, yes, critically important is that the NRF modules are 3.3 volt. So I've connected my red wire there to 3.3 volts, not 5 volts. Now they have 5 volt tolerant data lines, so when I start connecting up all the D connections here, it doesn't matter that we're squirting 5 volt signals into the data inputs because they're 5 volt tolerant, but the VCC must be 3.3. Now where does this 3.3 come from? Well, it comes from this chip here. The CH340 USB to serial driver actually has a 3.3 volt regulator inside it. This one here is a 5 volt regulator uh, for the the uh, high voltage input there. So this is where 3.3 volt comes from. It doesn't have huge amounts of power, but apparently, according to the how-to, it's enough for these regular modules, the one with the uh, onboard antenna, probably isn't enough for the high power one with the uh, external antenna. But uh, there it is, red on 3.3 volts. So now let's start connecting up the rest of the signals. Uh, so what have we got? We've got orange on 9, yellow on 10, and then there's a break, so let's do those two first. Yeah, so in fact it's uh, orange on 9, yellow on 10, blue on 11, purple on 12, and green on 13. And those are all uh, visible from that table there. So now I've uh, connected an identical ribbon cable to the second transceiver module, but there's a bit of an issue with the 3.3 volts on the nano and the breakout board. Um, it seems that the 3.3 volts here on the Nano, this pin here, comes from the CH340 chip, the USB to um, serial chip here, but it doesn't go anywhere um, on where it plugs into the breakout board. 3.3 volts is available on these pins here, but that appears to come from this uh, 3.3 volt regulator on the board. Now I don't suppose that matters, it doesn't matter uh, where the 3.3 volts comes from and that's the only accessible point that has a male pin so I'm going to uh, take the 3.3 volts and the ground for pins 1 and 2 from here and then the remaining connectors will go on to the digitals in exactly the same way as I did for the UNO. So scrolling down on this how-to and we're reminded that there are problems with 3.3 volts. Stick your capacitor across pins 1 and 2. And a reminder here in red, VCC must go to 3.3 volts, not 5. Okay, so now we come to software and libraries. And of course the first thing to do is to go to GitHub and get the uh, RF24 library and install it in my Arduino IDE. So, get Maniac Bugs excellent RF24 library, download it here. That takes me to Maniac Bug RF24 on GitHub. And down here there is the download zip button, so I'm going to do that. I probably won't go through the entire process of installing this. Uh, where's that? Yes, that's downloaded there, to RF24 master. If you go back to the um, how-to, it does give information on renaming the, um, where is it, renaming the zip folder that comes down, removing the master bit, and so on. It's all there. Uh, the main issue seems to be uh, characters like dashes, which have to be removed. So I've just shortened that to RF24. I've gone into my ID and installed it. So now in examples, uh, 
and come down right down to the bottom. I'll just nudge the mouse. Where is it? RF24. And there are a set of uh, examples, files that can be uh, installed into the Arduino. So on the how to it says, see our page about installing libraries here, that's fine. When you have the library installed, you can run the examples below. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna use the examples that came in with the library. I'm gonna use these examples. Um, there are two here. There's a transmit joystick example. And a bit further down, there's the receive joystick. And what this is doing is it's taking two analog pins. Here they are, A0 and A1 and transmitting the values that are on those analog pins to the other Arduino and then they are in the receive file they are printed using serial print so they'll go to the um, print monitor so let's load those two pieces of code in I'm, I'm probably going to have to just simply copy and paste the code straight off this page uh, try to compile it and put it into the two Arduinos let's give it a try so the first one I've simply called NRFTX and uh, I've managed to successfully install that into the UNO. Uh, no errors. Of course, there's not much indication that it's doing anything apart from the LED D13. Let me just shield that. You can see that that's lit. Now I can see that that's dimly lit. In fact, compare it with the OnLED. So that is flickering. That is uh, switching on and off. Now D13, and if you look at this list here, pin 13 is S clock. So there's a little hint there that S clock is actually oscillating. So I'm hopeful that that's transmitting. Let's uh, put the receiver program in the other Arduino and see what we get. So here's my other Arduino file, which I've called NRFRX for the receiver. And I've just clicked the serial monitor and look what we've got. This is a eureka moment, actually got some data um, coming out of the Nano in this case. Uh, there's my Nano there with its uh, transceiver set to receive. The Uno now I've just um, powered up with one of my little power banks. So that's transmitting. There's the transceiver for that. Transceiver for the receiver is here, Nano and serial monitor data is coming out there. Now, of course, on the transmitter, the UNO, I've not connected anything to analog pins A0 and A1. They're just floating, which explains why we're getting this rather nonsensical data. But if I just put my finger on analog A0 and A1, you can see that immediately we get noise and different data as I sort of connect those analog pins to various other pins. So it's definitely working. It's definitely reading analog A0 and A1 and transmitting the data. Result. So I'm now going to take my essentially standalone transmitter consisting of the mobile power bank, the UNO and the transceiver with its soldered on capacitor. And I'm going to walk it down the hall to the front door and just stick it there on the mat and see whether uh, we can pick it up from that distance. Uh, so there it is near the front door. That's about uh, seven or eight meters away. And what have we got? Yeah, we're still getting the uh, A0 and A1 data coming through. Time to take it out into the garden, I think. So I've now put the uh, transmitter on this table in the garden. There's the module there. And uh, my workshop is down these steps there's my solar power battery bank and the workshop is there can we see the module on the bench uh, not quite but anyway let's see if the data is coming through well now this is interesting uh, the data is there if I hold the uh, transceiver up with my hand like that if I push that down onto the bench and let go it says no radio available. If I lift it back up, we've got the data, drop it back down. Sometimes it's got the data, sometimes no radio available. So that seems to be the limit of its transmission, which is not unexpected. It's about 20 meters with a couple of walls in the way. 
I think that's pretty reasonable. And uh, here's the module in my hand. I'm trying to show both at the same time. If I sort of tilt it, no radio, tilt it back the other way, and we have data. So typical of uh, wireless transmission systems, highly sensitive to sort of, uh, you know, orientation and obstacles and things like that. But that's, uh, that's a result in my book.